This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. A good idea, you have to see if God will anoint it. A God idea is already anointed. And I'm telling you that you can begin to have success and prosper like never before when you can allow yourself to get in a position where you are being led by God. And the leadership of the Holy Spirit can take place through the avenue of dreams. Trinidad and Tobago. The 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. If you'll just trust him and believe him that there's a will of God for your life, there's something I'm supposed to do, and I will not miss it this year. Register now by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. If there's ever, and if there has ever been a time where we need to hear from God, where we need to make sure that we have the frequency to pick up what heaven is saying, it's now. Now's the time for us to understand that one word from God will really change everything. And the question is, uh, do we have Christian people who are positioned to hear from God? And we started talking about that in our last uh, uh, teaching. And tonight I want to talk about the fact that God can speak through dreams and visions. God can speak through dreams and vision. Now, oftentimes I'm approached uh, by someone who's telling me about a dream they had. And uh, they want to know, was that from God? And, and how should they interpret that dream? And I used to make fun of it, but it's important that as Christian people, we understand what the Bible has to say uh, about God speaking through dreams, and not only through dreams, through visions, and not only through visions, but through an audible voice. And so we're going to begin to talk about that. And um, the way I am going to approach this is through scriptures, especially if it's a subject that we've not heard a lot of uh, we're going to go ahead and take the time to turn to the Scriptures, look at the Scriptures, and I believe that God will speak to you through the Scriptures as we go on this journey to see how God speaks through dreams and visions. Let's begin in the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 28. And in verse 28, he says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Now, I believe this is prophetic. And I believe that if, it's, if this is going to happen in a, just a tremendous way, it already has in, in a lot of accounts I'll share with you tonight. But I believe that... Uh, Old men right now are going to start dreaming dreams, and young men are going to start having visions, and your sons and your daughters are going to start prophesying. In other words, I need for the body of Christ to get, get prepared for an invasion of the supernatural, that God is going to be speaking and he's also going to be heard. And so in, in Joel chapter 2, 28, it's not just old men that it talks about here. He also talks about the involvement of young men. Now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3, and let's look at verse 5, and uh, then from verse 5 to verse 9, and then 11 through 15. 1 Kings 3, 5, then verse 9, then 11 through 15. Now check this out. 
This is about Solomon, and it's something pretty key that happens here. He says, in Gibeon, on a, the Lord appeared to Solomon. How did he appear to Solomon? In a dream. Wow. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. How did he appear to Solomon? In a dream. So, a dream can be used as an avenue by which God can appear and which God can speak and which God can direct. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said in a dream, ask what I shall give thee. All right, so what did Solomon ask for? Now, this is pretty awesome. God shows up in a dream, and he, and he goes to Solomon. He says, I, I want you to ask me what I shall give thee. That's pretty awesome. I mean, how would you like for God to show up and say, what do you want? <laughs> ask me. And then we look at verse 9, what he asked for. He says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. Or in other words, give thy servant a hearing heart. Or give thy servant a heart to hear. That's a pretty powerful request because Solomon says, out of everything I can think of, the most valuable thing I can have is a heart that will be able to hear from you, a heart that would be able to comprehend what you're saying. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between what's good and what's bad. For who is able to judge this people, uh, judge this thy so great a people? And so this is an awesome request shows up in a dream. Obviously, there's interaction happening in that dream. Now, let's look at verses 11 through 15. He says, And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, verse 12, but hast asked for thyself an understanding to discern judgment, verse 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall be, shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. 14. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And then 15. And Solomon awoke. So all of this that we just read happened while he was asleep. All of this that we just read, this interaction between God and Solomon took place while he was asleep. And he says, and Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem, stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings. So all of this that we were looking at in verse 11 through 15, this was in a dream and he awoke. It was a dream. So notice how God was directing and instructing and interacting with Solomon, but it was a dream. So Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, they all had this type of interaction that took place in dreams as well. So I, I believe it's time for you and I as believers to begin to understand how this works and position ourselves that God may begin to speak to us in dreams. Look at Job chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. Job 33, 14 through 16. I, I think by making you aware that God has done this, hopefully we'll let you know that God will do this. He said, uh, for God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. So he's speaking, but man's not picking it up. Verse 15, he says, in a dream, he speaks in a vision of the night. He says, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed. And then verse 16, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instructions. So God says that when you sleep, 
He says, I can open your ears and I can seal instruction. So it's not, you know, somebody says, well, I, I just sleep to get rest. God can deal with you in your sleep. God can instruct you in your sleep. Not only will he give you sweet sleep, but he will give to you in your sleep. See, I always read that scripture like, God giveth to us deep sleep. Now, he will give He's giving to us. He's giving some instructions to us. He's, he's giving some insight to us. He's giving revelation. He's giving while we're asleep, praise God. And so that, that is a way that God gives instructions. He's done so in the past. I believe he's, he can do so today. Now, Daniel is famous for this. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 1. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 1. He says, in the first year of Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. And so here is God now instructing and giving wisdom and information to Daniel in a dream. Let's look at Jeremiah 23 and 28. Jeremiah 23 and 28. And verse 28 says, The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat, saith the Lord? And so you see in verse 28 here, he's instructing the prophets to share dreams. He's instructing the prophets to share dreams. This is something that as believers, you know, as a believer in my own life, I've just not heard many people give instructions from the Word of God on how God can use dreams to communicate things to us. Look at Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. Again, looking at the Scriptures and seeing what they have to say about this. Matthew chapter 1 and 20 then Matthew 2, 13, and then Matthew 2, 19 through 21. We'll look at all these, but look at this. Uh, then this is going to show you how God instructed Joseph, um, Jesus' earthly uh, parent, in dreams. Now, Matthew 1, 20, but while he thought on these things, you know, when Mary shows up and, you know, says she's pregnant, but it didn't happen by a man. It was the Holy Ghost. I mean, any man would probably be like, what? The Holy Ghost? Girl, what's more? You lying. So God had to deal with him. He says, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him where? In a dream. In a dream. And in a dream, the angel of the Lord said to Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. So God convinced Joseph in a dream. He says, for that which is conceived in her, it is indeed of the Holy Ghost. So he receives confirmation of what Mary said. The angel appeared to him in a dream. He didn't appear to him when, you know, when he was, you know, walking outside and all that. In a dream, the angel appeared to him. There's just something about that. Why, why is it that the angel appeared in the dream? It's something that we need to pay attention to. And then he convinced Joseph in a dream. Now, look at Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. He says, And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. All right? And he says to Joseph, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. So you have divine guidance that, that God is providing for, you know, baby Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And in a dream, God comes to Joseph and he says, dude, it's time to get up and go to Egypt. And, he, and, and be thou there until I bring the word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. God's talking to him in a dream. Get up, it's time to go to Egypt. And he says, you know, I'm going to bring you a word because Herod seeks to destroy you. So, my goodness, look at, what, look at what God's doing with Joseph. He's speaking to him in a dream. 
Uh, and I'm going to show you a little later on. There may be a reason why God can't speak to you in a dream. You're dreaming about all kinds of stuff that's cluttered in your mind and things you've experienced and deposited in your mind. But man, I believe that God can speak to us through dreams. He's speaking to Joseph, giving him specific details on where to go and when to go and who's, uh, like Herod is planning on trying to destroy him. God can do the same thing again. Today, we are his sheep and we hear his voice. And then now let's look at um, Matthew 2, verses 19 through 21. He says, but when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared where? In a dream to Joseph when Joseph was where? In Egypt, because God says he's going to send him a word in Egypt, saying, arise, take the young child and his mother, go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. These are specific details that God chose to express in a dream to Joseph. And thank God that Joseph was available to allow his dreams to be invaded by God. He got specific instructions on where to go, when to go, and what was the situation. That's a powerful thing. That's an amazing thing. And I believe that your success, I believe your prosperity, I believe your deliverance, I believe you, your, the, the will of God for your life, I believe a lot of things are invested in you hearing from God because there's a difference between, you know, having a good idea and a God idea. You've heard me say this before. A good idea, you have to see if God will anoint it. A God idea is already anointed. And I'm telling you that you can begin to have success and prosper like never before when you can allow yourself to get in a position where you are being led by God. And the leadership of the Holy Spirit can take place through the avenue of dreams. So even unbelievers sometimes receive dreams from God. Yeah. Somebody say, what? Yeah. I mean, that, that sounds, you know, uh, a little different here to say that an unbeliever uh, can receive a dream from God. And, and, um, and also, uh, God's servants can interpret it. God knows how to draw people who are not even believers through dreams. So we've got to be careful not to dismiss every dream, you know, because maybe you, you thought, well, that didn't mean anything. I just had some, a lot of cabbage and, and stuff last night. Uh, or we've got, to, we've, got to, uh, we've got to understand that not all dreams come from God, but we've got to get to the place where we recognize what does come from God. God, through dreams, can speak to the subconscious mind, or he can speak through your spirit. Look at Job chapter 20 and verse 8, because, you know, if, if you don't pay attention to the dreams, they can easily be forgotten. They can easily fly away, or they can be chased away by, by those who dismiss them as nonsense. And so I'm asking you to pay a little bit more attention to dreams that you have. Verse 8 says what I just said, He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. And so, you know, you've got to, you've got to stop quickly dismissing a dream and saying, oh, it was only a dream. Sometimes it could be more than just a dream. Oh, it was just a dream, so you ignore it. There were instructions given, oh, but that was just a dream, so you don't write it down, and then later on you forget it. I think we need to reevaluate how we see dreams and how God uses those dreams to instruct and to guide and to lead. I believe your prosperity could be as a result of a dream. I believe that uh, God knowing where you need to be, when you need to be, what you need to do when you get there can, can, can be as a result of a dream. So some dreams are warnings and will not necessarily come to pass if we take heed to those dreams and do what, uh, what he warns us about. So there are certain things you have a dream about and then God shows you the tragedy of the dream and then he gives you a warning and then you find yourself obeying that warning, then you can probably stop that tragedy from happening because you paid attention to the warnings that, uh, that were in that dream. 
And so we've got to stop quickly dismissing it. I know, you know, sometimes people, we, we've gotten so used, especially in this day and time, it was only a dream. It was only a dream, but it might have been a warning. It might have been the Holy Spirit saying something like, he told, I had a dream one time where he says, you need to slow down and don't move so quick. And it probably saved my life. It, uh, it's God who can lead and guide and protect when you understand that he can operate and speak through dreams. So let's get rid of this thing about, well, it was just a dream. Now let's go to Daniel chapter 1 and verse 17, and let's look at the life of Daniel just for a moment. And then I'm going to give you some things so, so that you can know, uh, when, you know, when you have a dream, uh, how to know that that was from God, you know, and how to even evaluate that. Verse 17, as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So Daniel had an, an anointing to interpret visions and dreams. Not everybody has an anointing to interpret visions of dreams, but there are some people who have an anointing to understand and who can interpret visions and dreams. Daniel was one of those persons. Look at Daniel 5 and 12. He says, For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named uh, Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. So he mentions here that Daniel, again, has that anointing to interpret dreams. And then in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 1, in the third year uh, of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar, and the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. And so, you know, I thank God that there are people who are alive today who have an anointing and an ability to interpret dreams because some, the dreams will sometimes be symbolic. And, 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 and there will be people who are anointed to, to uh, define the symbolism in a dream to tell you exactly what was going on. So when you have dreams, I need you to know these five things. When you have dreams, I want to share five things you need to know. The first thing I need you to know, number one, is that every dream is not of God. Every dream is not of God. So I don't want you to hear this teaching tonight, and then you step away and you think, oh my God, every dream, you know, every dream you have is, is from God. Not every dream is of God. And that's important for you to know so that you don't think that every time you have a dream, that's of God. So that's number one. Number two, they are often given to you in allegory or in symbolism. That when God speaks to you through a dream, it's often given in an allegory or in some type of symbolism, okay? So it may not be just as simple as, well, I had a dream, and this happened, and that happened, and this happened. All of those may be an allegory or a symbolism of something that's going on in your life or around you. Number three, the third thing we need, you need to know when you have dreams, be willing to submit your dreams to those who have a gift, uh, something that you, 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 you're going through and you dream about, who has a gift to interpret dreams? Um, and after you have asked God and you feel you need help, that's when you go to those people. But here's what I would do. Um, if I have a dream, I submit those, that dream to those who, are, who have a gift, uh, and I only do that after I ask God. In other words, I'm going to ask God first. That's the best place to go. I have a dream. God, give me the interpretation of that dream. God, show me what this means. God, show me what this is about. You'd be surprised, some of you, that God is so willing to quickly show you what that dream is about 
and quickly give you that dream. And that's only when you feel like you need help. And so there are people who are anointed. Uh, there are people you can submit your dreams to, but don't, don't submit your dream to other people and you've not yet submitted that dream to God. You've not yet said, all right, God, show me what meaneth this. If there ever was a time we needed to hear from God, it's right now. Spiritual noise and clutter can leave us without guidance and overcome by negative emotions. Creflo Dollar shows us how one word from God will change everything in his transformative series, Recognizing the Voice of God, for a love gift of $25 or more. All four messages are yours today. You really want directions from the Lord? You really want God to begin to direct your path on what you should do, when you should do it, and how you should do it? Then you've got to be willing to come up here you got to be willing to separate yourself unto God. And I'm telling you, the greatest position for you to be in is in a position where God can begin to lead and to guide you and to get you to the place where you need to be. And you'll go into being a winning son of God. The voice of God will equip you to see victory and supernatural results in times of need. Get this life-changing series now by calling or visiting the website on your screen. Get your daily dose of grace on the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind every day when you download and stream these uplifting messages. Gain a revelation of the fullness of God's grace from Creflo Dollar's powerful sermons and transform into the powerful, victorious believer God made you to be. He will always take our brokenness, I believe, and he will bring new life and he will bring beauty from it. But thank God for the Word because it has the ability in and of itself to repair. With the Changing Your World podcast, you have encouraging and life-changing wisdom at your fingertips 24-7. Tune in whenever you need to be edified, no matter where you are. Subscribe to Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Tap and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit creflodollarministries.org today. God bless you. Thank you partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.